Um, I feel, for those of old enough to remember, I feel as I should have a red book and be saying, David Hopcroft, John Morgan, <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> but I never had any ambitions to be Eamon Andrews, really. <laughs> Many ambitions, but not, not that one. But it, it's, it's a huge joy and a privilege to have this opportunity to have a conversation with David. I've had many, many conversations with David since I first met him in 1978, and we'll come back to that. Um, and they've, they've all been extremely interesting and enjoyable, and most of them, if not all of them, have been sociological, even mm. if they didn't start that way, mm. because David has this wonderful way of, of turning everything into sociology and sociology into everything, which is just fantastic. Um, just as a, as, a, as a starting point, um, David is, is, as I'm sure everybody that knows him knows, a, a really rather modest and self-effacing person. And to the extent that in our exchange of emails last week, when I, I asked him for a bit of CV information, really so I could get things in the right order, he sent me a little list of, of, of his areas of interest, as if I didn't know. <laughs> as if, you know, as if most of the world doesn't know in a way that, you know, David is um, one of the, if not the foremost experts on the sociology of the family and, and personal life, as well as having worked in many, in many, many other areas. So I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to talk for a little bit a, 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 about some things that are important to me, and, and, but mostly this is not about me, this is about David. Um, I suppose at the risk of embarrassing him completely, I would say that David, I see David as a member of my family of choice. And I feel that for many reasons, not just because I've known him since 1978, <coughs> although longevity of the relationship is part of that, but also because of your involvement with my extended network as well. Um, you know, for the sake of a bit of autobiography, David supervised my ex-husband's PhD. He supervised my sister's PhD. <laughs> <laughs> he, I mean, he certainly mentored me in my, in my early years as a, as a lecturer here at Manchester, and I, I hope we'll say more about that. Um, my first encounter with David, not in the embodied form, was this book. And this, this is the 1971 paperback edition of mm -hmm. the 1970 book, which the University of Manchester Sociology Department, then quite a new department, produced under the leadership of the late Professor Peter Worsley. This was the book that was one of three books, um, the other two being C. Rack Mill's Sociological Imagination and Peter Berger's Invitation, Invitation to Sociology, mm -hmm. that were on my pre um, pre-degree reading list the summer before I became a sociology student in 1971 and being um, very excited about being about to become a sociology student I did read the book that summer and although um, <clears throat> and was very intrigued by this D.H.J. Morgan on the front cover didn't know it doesn't actually say who wrote which bits in in the book really but I know that part two was David's responsibility, um, and I'm sure many other bits as well. But you know, as a as somebody coming to sociology at that time, um, in in the early 70s, and thinking, beginning to think about, you know, how how to yeah how to reflect on my everyday life. The 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 writing in that book about the family and sex roles as they were called then, etc., was was very influential to my proto-feminist sociological self. So, thank you, David, for beginning my shaping as a sociologist. But what about you? How did you get from Hatch End to the Humber? How did you get <laughs> to the University of Hull and gradually into mm. sociology? Um, I, I think, like um, many of these things, it's sort of series, series of accidents. Um, it was an accident, uh, I, I think, to start with, that I actually went to university at all. Um, I think I was um, originally um, planning to uh, join the civil service at some sort of uh, level, and I was at the, the particular school I was at, there was a particular sort of series of uh, courses for, for people who were intending to 
enter the civil service. And it was only um, uh, at some stage a, a, a very influential teacher of, of, of uh, English sort of took me to one side and said, why aren't you going to university? Um, and um, yeah, and it, it was a, a arose out of that conversation that I uh, decided to go to Hull University uh, to study, uh, study economics because I was then um, uh, in, in the sixth form sort of studying economics, uh, English and, and history. Um, there, there would have been no sociology back then. Very little. <coughs> there was very little. In, in your sixth form. Yeah. Mm. So I, I arrive at Hull and um, uh, you have to sort of sign up for a special subject. Um, you know, you, uh, so you all do the basics sort of economic theory courses and all that sort of stuff. And uh, there's a list of things, special subjects. And there's a thing, practically everyone else seemed to be signing up for something called industry and trade, which I felt well, didn't sound terribly exciting. So, and then I saw <laughs> this, I saw this thing called sociology right at the bottom, <laughs> and I said, well, that sounds interesting. It, it, it's referred to things like sort of family and mm -hmm. class and all that sort of thing. And I thought, oh, I'll, I'll give that a whirl. Um, so um, I, I then went to have a talk to Peter Worsley, who was, uh, I think, in a, in a Nissen hut at that time and, um, and on the campus at uh, Keele University. Who, uh, and uh, I interrupted at the time when he was uh, shaving, um, and um, <laughs> for some <laughs> reason, which I didn't quite understand. And um, he, he said, excuse me, I'm bleeding to death. But, um, <laughs> and, and was, was this some kind of sociological experiment? I think it probably was. I think it it. was yeah. But anyway, uh, and so he said, yes, delighted, because um, in fact there were only two people um, uh, teaching sociology, uh, Peter Worsley and uh, another person I found very influential, Gordon Horobin. Mm. Um, and not many more students, actually, <laughs> about, 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 about half a dozen students. Um, uh, before me, uh, I think a year or so, a couple of years before me, there was a young man called Anthony Giddens, who um, some of you may have heard of. Um, but, um, Except we're not talking about him no, anymore. No, 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 right. <laughs> and, um, and so, so the, you know, uh, and so uh, sociology was then a kind of, sort of special subject, and I, I was supposed to be doing economics and learning about why demand curves slope downwards from left to right and uh, all about indifference curves and all that mm. thing. Um, but very quickly, I, I discovered that sociology was what I really was interested in. So I tried to get as much sociology or political science or something like that in my the package as I, mm. I had. So that although I came out with a, um, a BSc Econ, um, sociology was a very much large part of it. And, and then you, you went on to do a master's degree in uh, sociology? Uh, yes, I, 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 um, I, I continued to do a master's. You can, you can only do a master's by thesis at that mm. time. At, uh, at Hull, um, where I wrote um, a, a thesis on the uh, social and educational backgrounds of Anglican bishops um, over a hundred year period. Um, like this, you do. Th this was, <laughs> at, a, this was uh, at a time, uh, you know, the kind of time of the early New Left and so on, which everybody was sort of plotting the social and educational backgrounds of various other people. You know, there was a chap called Chris Otley who was doing uh, army officers. Mm -hmm. Theo Nichols was doing managers uh, and, uh, and so on. But I think we all had this idea that once the last sort of social connection had been, had been mapped, then capitalism would crumble. Mm. Um, but um, it, it, didn't, it didn't quite work out. And it was, it. I mean, it was a time yeah. um, when, yes, as you say, mm. people focused on social mm. elites mm. and sociologists yeah. Yeah, thought right. that actually analysing mm. the powerful was really mm. important. Right. And we just don't do it sufficiently anymore, do we? Not, not as, not, not as no. much as I think we ought to do. No. no so so t t tell us a bit more about, a little bit more about the bishops, because you went on mm. to do more work on bishops, didn't you? No, I, I, this, huh? this was, this was okay. just it. This was it. Right. it, it I, in fact, my uh, master, because nobody told me when to stop, uh, my master's <laughs> thesis actually was <laughs> longer than my PhD. <laughs> um, but Maybe but that's what's confusing. <laughs> that's what's yes. confusing. Yeah. Um, and, um, uh, well, I mean, it's surpri not surprising. I mean, the results, in some sense, it's not terribly surprising that they came from a somewhat restricted background in terms of uh, uh, so social class and educational. Um, I think the, the interesting thing that I found, if you, if you sort of took this over uh, a 100-year period, as mm -hmm. I did, you saw that a move for that uh, at the beginning of that period, uh, bishops were very much part of a broad 
social elite. You know, there are close connections with the army and and uh, and and uh, the government and, uh, and 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 other kind of elites in society. <coughs> Um, what you began to get over this period is, is that the, the bishops, as the result, became more of a s specifically ecclesiastical or religious elite. Um, they, they had much more specifically focused uh, training at theological college and so on, uh, although often a very narrow range of uh, <coughs> theological colleges, and, and, and their careers were much more sort of within the church and and, and so a, a on. kind so of professionalisation. Yeah, exactly. So it was a, it was a yeah, kind of example of professionalisation. Yeah. Interesting, mm. interesting. And, and then into a really quite a different world, mm. as I understand it. You came to Manchester yeah. as a, research, as a research right, yeah. associate mm. in the early 60s mm. and were catapulted onto the factory floor. Is that yes, right? that's right. Yes. Um, again, this was... Uh, um, when, well, Manchester then, then was a department of social anthropology and sociology, and um, sociology had the feel of being slightly added on to uh, uh, social anthropology, which was then uh, the professor was a very, uh, very well known and very charismatic uh, Max Gluckman. Um, and um, the um, the reason why I I, I came was, was again another of these kind of accidental things that prior uh, a couple of years prior to my arrival. Uh, the American sociologist George Homans had come and be, uh, been attached to the uh, department for a year or so. And he said, well, why, why don't you use your anthropological techniques to, uh, to look at uh, life in contemporary Britain? Um, and uh, so this was taken up. And there, so there were three of us um, employed on studying a, a factory, an electrical instruments factory in Salford, um, and then there were also, um, down the corridor, people like Colin Lacey was studying schools and, and so on. So that was how that came about. Um, so yes, yeah, so I ended up in a factory, factory employing large numbers of women. So I, I, was, I was about to bet that we, apart <coughs> from the, the foreman and the, person and the, uh, and the cleaner, um, the, uh, I, I was the only man on, mm. on this particular shop floor. And I think, I mean, you have written autobiographically yeah, I have written about, that, yeah. about that, yes. Um, and and was, was that part of the route into the sociology of the family, thinking about women in the workplace? I, I, think, it, I, think, it, I think it probably was, um, in, insofar as um, uh, in listening to their sort of conversations on uh, tea breaks and, uh, or, or when I was working on, on, on the bench and so on, you became aware um, of uh, relationships outside in the community in, in Salford, and particularly much of the conversation revolved around family mm -hmm. and children mm -hmm. and uh, you know, ha how to uh, make arrangements to get to work on time, etc., etc. Et et <coughs> um, and so, yes, I, I, I think that, that was, um, you know, I hadn't, you know, I, I, I think we had some, the, the title of the project was something grand like social control in two Salford factories or something. We, we actually only managed one factory and there wasn't a great deal about social control. But <laughs> you, didn't um, you didn't have ESRC <laughs> on your back in those days no, about it was, it was not finishing the data was, collection. Was, yeah. Oh, we finished the data <coughs> collection, but it just didn't quite deliver <coughs> what uh, yes. we'd, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'd, we'd, we'd uh, <laughs> promised, I suppose. <laughs> Um, and yes, yeah, so that, that was one of the um, things that led me to sort of think about the family. Mm -hmm. But then I, I forgot about it for, for a while. And mm -hmm. I started teaching uh, industrial sociology mm -hmm. and sociology of religion. Mm -hmm. I mean, per perhaps we would come back to the mm -hmm. family, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But perhaps just just on that. I mean, uh, as an aside, you know, again, those of you that know David may find it hard to imagine him at a factory bench, and, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I kind of. Uh, like to know much more about that, but mm. we, we need to move mm. on. I, I, I guess, you know, given that, that we're celebrating 50 years of the Manchester Department, perhaps a little bit more about the illustrious Professor Gluckman mm. and the, the, the kind of context that you were coming into as, yeah, a, as, a, yeah. as a young academic at yeah. that point. Well, I, I think it, it is, it's actually quite interesting because I, 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 I came to, um, to Manchester um, uh, you know, uh, uh, calling myself as a, a sociologist, you know, I, I'd obviously been aware through Peter Worsley of uh, the uh, social uh, anthropological literature. Mm -hmm. And indeed, when I, when I sort of met Max Gluckman for the first time, he said, oh yes, um, 
I'm your intellectual grandfather. <laughs> and um, this is because he taught Peter Worsley and uh, Peter Worsley taught me and, and so on. And it was very much that, that kind of rhetoric of family very much pervaded the, uh, the, uh, the department at that time. There was that kind of um, seeing the department as a, a family or a, a, tribe. a, ra a rather patriarchal family. A rather patriarchal I family, yes, it was. It was rather patriarchal. <coughs> Um, and uh, I didn't see a sort of great deal of Max Hutton, mm. but he was very much a sort of, you know, you knew he was there, very much a presence. Is, that, is that story about him lying on the table in meetings true? Um, I don't think I ever saw him lie on the table, um, <laughs> but uh, it, it, you know, there may have been such an occasion. Apocryphal um, sociology story. But, I mean, uh, give an example. I mean, when I, when, when I first arrived, he, like I suppose many academics, smoked a pipe and you know, did, was doing sort of Don work, I suppose. And um, um, and then he decided he was going to stop smoking, and so as a result, everybody else in the department had to stop smoking. <laughs> and um, so that that was you know it gives you a sort of example of the uh, the character of uh, um, you know the patriarchal departments mm -hmm. in, in those. Well, I'm sure that in in that kind of respect, it wasn't entirely uh, mm -hmm. unusual. No. And and were you at, at, at that point aware? Um, very aware of the development of this relatively new and growing discipline. I mean, I know there were uh, um, there were kind of strong tensions mm. between sociology and yeah, anthropology yeah. Mm. Um, in a slight, maybe slightly later. Mm. And mm. I mean, when I was at Manchester, there was mm. still talk of the great bloodletting and such yeah. like when the discipline split and yeah. never darkened each other's doors again mm. and such. Well, I, I, I think that, that uh, I think it's probably to, to, one can one can overstate that. Mm. Um, um, I mean, I, 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 I arrived at Manchester sort of full of sea right sea right mills. That's what we'd all been been mm. reading, and mm. that's what we thought mm. it actually would be about. And then uh, going to my first seminar, in which the whole board was covered with kinship diagrams and so on, um, was slightly baffling to say to say the least. And you know, you, 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 there was this the wall would be covered with these triangles and circles and things, and, and then someone would point to them and say, he's in a rather anomalous position, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so that, and there'd be some sort of discussion about, about that at, for, for another half an hour or so. And um, so... People had time in those so, days. Yeah, we did, yes, it, <laughs> People it, talked it, to it, each this other. This is another story. Yeah. Um, and so that, um, you know, arriving with Steve Wright Mills, I, um, and we had... Um, there was a group of us, including I think John Lee, who I think some of you might might remember, um, and uh, Valdo Pons, and things. We had sort of clandestine discussions on Max Weber. Would you believe? Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and yeah, we were not supposed to be <laughs> known. <laughs> we were doing a crowd. Fantastic. Oh dear. And <laughs> Sorry, just the idea of you know closeting oneself to have a discussion about about Max Weber. Mm. I, I guess you know the the, the just the, the aside there about mm. about time. I mean the the culture yeah. the culture was very different, wasn't it? it in it, terms of yeah. pressures and expectations and, oh, and, uh, and such like. Yes, I mean um, I mean practically everybody went for a coffee break in the morning, which you know at minimum half an hour. You know, and went down to the uh, to the uh, the senior lounge down, downstairs, um, and often sort of sat around listening to senior uh, academics like Sally Final or something talking mm -hmm. about something. And, um, um, and then we'd, there'd be another half hour in the afternoon for tea, um, and the lunch was also reasonably extended as well. I, <laughs> see, I see a sea of green faces <laughs> out, out here. Um, <laughs> the envy is palpable. And so <laughs> and, but... Um, yeah, so there was a, it did seem to be a lot of time in which one, one didn't do a great deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I, um, I, I couldn't possibly comment, right, David, yeah. on, on, on that. I'm sure you did do a great deal. Yeah. And in terms of your teaching, you mm. certainly did mm. a huge amount. Yeah. And I, I, I will mm. come back to that. But mm. it, was, it was 1975, I yeah. think, when Social Theory in the Family was, was yeah, published, right, yeah, which yeah. really kind yeah. of marked... Mm you know, marked your place mm. As, mm. as a sociologist mm. of the family. I mean, mm. I graduated by then, so, it, you know, I didn't read it mm. until three or four years later, mm. I mm. think, in fact. But can you give us a sense of 
where that, I mean, some clandestine reading of Weber, <laughs> perhaps <laughs> behind that, amongst other things. Where did, where did the impetus, and, and what do you remember of its reception? Um, well, uh, the, the impetus, I mean, I, I think the, um, the only impetus was in that um, textbook, mm -hmm. you know, when I, I sort of wrote the chapter on, on, on the family. Indeed. Um, largely because nobody else seemed to want to write about the family. And the, uh, you know, it was just one of those things where there's an awkward silence. And someone <laughs> said, well, who, who's going to do the family? And I sort of put my hand up, not having a clue what that was. And the rest is history, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> and, um, and so, yes, uh, and then, um, and I suppose, in, in, I suppose one of the things that, that uh, sort of led to social theory within the family was that... Um, you know, quite a lot of the literature on the family was, yes, I mean, quite, quite interesting, but it, um, it, it seemed to be a series of sort of largely discrete uh, studies mm. of mate selection, mm. Um, mm. Uh, divorce, mm. um, parenting perhaps, mm. you know, and, 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 and so on. And, and um, endless regurgitations of Parsons. Yes, that's right, mm. yes. So the only sort of theory you, you was mentioned would, would, would be Parsons. Mm. Um, and I, I think that family life was actually a bit more interesting, a bit more dangerous mm. than this. Um, and um, so I'd sort of, I'd becoming aware of um, uh, some of the, 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 the sort of feminist literature, and that, that uh, increased after I spent a year in uh, the University of Victoria mm -hmm. in, in Canada. Um, and I thought that here, here are people also talking about family and family life, but in a quite different way. Um, and I also read people like R.D. Lang and, uh, and, 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 and so on. I thought, well, and that, those kinds of insights, whatever you like, whatever you make of them, again, didn't seem to be appearing in the um, in the family literature that I was. Uh, it certainly wasn't was appearing in the in the literature I read as an undergraduate. That's absolutely. You know, absolutely no, the case. Right. I mean, I do remember yeah. reading Lang, but not mm. in the context mm. no, of the no. sociology no, of, of the family. Mm. But and you, 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 you went on, as I as I understand it, to look at at, at different kinds of family mm. form. I mean, when when I first met you, and I I don't know, I don't suppose you remember this, and there's no reason why you should. But I first met David when I was quite a new um, graduate student at the University of Lancaster in 1978, and David came to to give a talk about Bloomsbury, about the Bloomsbury mm. group. Okay. Um, in a sense, a kind of elective family. Mm. Okay. Um, and it stands out for me so powerfully, be partly because, you know, I, I'd seen his name over the years and, and, you know, he was from somewhere else. He was from Manchester and, you know, therefore, but must be much more important than anybody that I'd already been mm -hmm. taught by or met. And you, you looked very impressive. I mean, you looked very professorial at that point, even though, even though you weren't a professor yeah. at that stage, or my kind of image, and a classic male professor in a way, bearded and corduroyed and <laughs> those, sorts of, those sorts of things. It's all right, he doesn't mind being no, teased. No, just... <laughs> um, but I do remember being very impressed also with mm. what you had to say, because, I mean, for me, um, I, I mean, I was really interested in mm. Virginia Woolf and interested in that kind of writing, but mm. also, just as an aside, mm. I'd done my undergraduate dissertation on William Morris, mm. so I was interested mm. in how one might mm. connect sociology mm. with those mm. kinds of mm. movements, and, mm. and I just remember being very sparky. Mm. And I remember it so clearly that I can... We, we, we went for dinner afterwards mm. at Nick Abercrombie's house, who I think mm. was then head of, head of mm. department, and I can even remember what we had for dinner. <laughs> I think I can too. <laughs> well, Nick, Nick cooked meatballs yeah, for dinner, right. and Nick was a very good cook, so I was mm. quite impressed mm. by, by this cooking. But I just think that there's something about being able to remember what you ate that says something <laughs> about the occasion. Mm. And, OK, I'm writing history backwards, but it mm. was mm. very important mm. nevertheless. Mm. And just then to pick up on what you, mm. what you said a moment ago, the next time I met David was a few months later, when he was a tutor at the BSA postgraduate summer school entitled Feminist Theory, which in 1978 was pretty amazing, really. Mm. You remember that occasion? I do indeed, do? yes. yes and, right. and there were two male tutors, yourself and the late Mike, Mike, Mike Brake, Brake yeah, yeah. and Diana Leonard. Diana Leonard. And um, Daphne Taylor. Daphne Taylor, Taylor that's, that's, yeah. that's right. And it was, you know, it was absolutely life-changing for me. Jenny Shaw organised it. 
totally life-changing for me, that summer school, and for many other feminist sociologists yeah. of my generation. So I suppose I wanted to go back to those yeah. early feminist influences yeah. and how you got to be a tutor at the feminist theory summer school and, and then you know, what feminism has meant yeah. um, perhaps to, to you in your, in yeah. your work. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think that, um, again, I, I'd started sort of writing um, uh, little bits of pieces um, where I've sort of tried to say, well, what, um, what does the sort of feminist critique mean, initially for family sociology, but I also later wanted to ask what it meant for sociology generally. Um, and so that I, 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 I you know, started sort of... Um, uh, trying to sort of talk about this and saying that we, we really need to put it on the agenda. Um, I think I, w I was involved in the BSA Family and Kinship Study Group at the time, and I think I, I sort of organised one or two sessions around um, the sort of feminist in, uh, impact on, on family sociology. Um, and so, um, presumably, then, you know, uh, much to my surprise, I was asked if I would sort of come along to this um, uh, summer school. Um, um, and uh, um, I did, and um, it, uh, it was a very challenging and exciting thing, you know, because, uh, yeah, as you said, the, there was only one other tutor, Mike Brake, uh, who, who was a man, um, and um, I think among the students, there were, what, about three, four? Um, I, th I think there were only two. two. I think there may have been three, and yeah. one disappeared at yes, some right, point yeah. in the week. Yeah. But among the students, there were people like Rosemary Deem, Sylvia yeah, Warby. Right. Yeah, you know, right. it, 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 t it turned out yeah. to, mm. to have been quite mm. a significant group. And it's a, it, it, I suppose inevitably, uh, uh, as a result of um, someone who's you know, thought that in various ways feminism was relevant and should be relevant for sociology, uh, but being surrounded by, uh, by women who are obviously much more advanced in sort of their reading of literature on patriarchy and things than, than, than I was. Um, and moreover, you had the experience, where, you know, the, the, what they were talking about was rooted in, in their experience. So it sort of forced me to sort of think about, well, what about my experience as a man in that very rare occasion, academic occasion, when you're a member in a minority? Because in most other sociological occasions at that time, BSA conferences and so on, men were very much in the majority. Indeed. And certainly on the platforms and, 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 and so on. So I, I, I suppose that, that led me to sort of asking, you know, about issues about men and masculinities in doing sociology. Mm. Um, and uh, so I wrote a short piece on, on that. Indeed, so. and went on to write very much more on, mm -hmm. on men and masculinity. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you mm -hmm. want to say a little bit more about yeah. Well, I, I, about I think that? There, there are two other things. One, one was um, the book Discovering Men was mm. really um, a kind of, um, I wouldn't, wouldn't say it's about the methodology of men's studies, but it, it, it was about, if you like, the logic and the uh, practice of, of mm. men's studies, how men came to, um, you know, uh, came to un reach some kind of critical understanding of their place in the world and, and in relation to sociological practice mm. um, uh, and, 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 and so on. Um, and so that, that was the main sort of theme of, of that particular book, was, you know, just, um, if, if, you, if you accept that uh, sociological practice is gendered, and that gender isn't just something you just sort of add on at the end, but it should, you know, runs right through what mm -hmm. you're talking about, whether it's family or sociological theory or class or whatever, uh, then what are the implications of that? And re also realising that gender isn't just women. Um, so, you know, what, what have men to do with class, for example? Mm -hmm. What have men, well, we know what men have to do with power, but, you know, but what have men to do with family? What have men to do with leisure? Or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and realising that these are questions uh, to be asked of every branch of sociological yes. inquiry and the way you do and it. That, and that, yeah. classic, that yeah. classic question, that classic issue about making the familiar strange, mm. which mm. I think you did so well in, in relation to looking at men. And mm. I mean, I certainly never felt, and I know that you know, other feminists didn't, never felt about your work that it had any of that kind of me too 
element about mm. it. And there were many men writing at the time where one did feel it was, it was you know, me too and I want to be part of, of, mm. of, of this gang. Mm. You know, it, it, it felt to me as though your work was genuine sociological inquiry which contributed mm. to, to the wider feminist discussion. Mm. So. Well, th thank you for saying that. I mean, I, I, I hope that, mm. that was the case. I didn't I want to sort of write another one that sort of, sort of you know, men have difficulties as well. Mm. Right? Exactly, it's, it's exactly. Which is certainly exactly. true, but, you know, <laughs> yes. but yeah, I didn't want yes, to Yes, but that. not the starting point. Yeah. Oh, indeed, indeed. Um, I mean, we could, we could talk about those issues for, for, the, for the rest of our time, but I'm, I'm conscious there are other things. And although this is primarily a research context, I, I did want to say a little bit to David and perhaps draw him out a little bit about, about David as a teacher, because um, you know, I have very direct experience of that, not of being taught by David, but actually of, of teaching with him, mm. of, of, of co-teaching with him, and learning so much mm. about how to convey things sociologically mm. from David. And uh, I mean, also, also of, of trying to replace David when he was on sabbatical, which is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life, including being told at a fortnight's notice I had to teach the sociology of religion. Not one course, but two courses in the sociology of religion to different groups, as well, um, as, well as um, the history and sociology core course, which we did yeah. teach together at we one did. point. But David also developed what was a legendary course at, at, at Manchester, which was generally called SLAM, mm. the Sociology of Literature, Art and Music, which you know sociologists all over the world must have done, I'm sure. So, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's gone down in, in sociological mm. history. But one of the, one of the things that, that, that always struck me about David as a teacher is that although he is a relatively quiet and as I've said, quite modest person, put him on a stage in front of undergraduate students, and he is a man transformed, or well, he certainly <laughs> was. I mean, I don't know how many people know that I mean, David has past experience in amateur dramatics, mm. and that, I think, stood you in, in good mm. stead as a lecturer. Um, I'm, I'd just like you to say just a few words about what you, what you felt you were doing up there, because everybody yes, loved I'm it. <laughs> everybody <laughs> loved it. Right. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I always think my, my, my biggest role as in amateur dramatics was uh, playing the cat in Dick Whittington. And, um, <laughs> so I, I, I don't think that, that, um, that, that helped me a great deal. Um, but um, no, I, I, um, I, 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 I think yes, that, that, I mean, I, 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 mean, I did have that, that experience of sort of um, a, you know, a first year class. Mm -hmm. I think actually was in in Canada rather than, than, than here. But, um, and sort of strolling up and down and gesticulating and mm. you know, doing you know, all, all the uh, textbook um, uh, <laughs> presentation <laughs> things and so on. Um, and then I noticed, looked down at the front row and there was somebody in the front row exactly imitating all my gestures. <laughs> once I it. And it was slightly off putting. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, but what, what I thought, well, I mean, uh, I think, Really, um, I, I, and I, I must say, it took me a long time to do this. I think you, you, you probably didn't have the misfortune of attending some of my earliest lectures on industrial sociology, which were a bit, um, a bit pedestrian, I, su I suspect, and rather Fine close too. to the, uh, mm. rather close to the texts. Mm. Um, but um, no, I, I think it was really. You know, I suppose what I wanted to do, uh, you know, I, I, I always thought sociology was a wonderful and exciting thing and I, I just wanted, I hoped, mm. you know, that, that at least some of that would um, convey itself in... And, and it not, did. Not only what, what I taught, but, you know... It did, and I, I, did. I know it did, and mm. it certainly conveyed itself to me as a set of possibilities mm. as to how one might, might mm. teach. And, you know, at the risk of sounding like, you know, a complete old lag you know it is a sadness that lectures are, are so contained and confined often now and mm. you know now need to follow not the textbook exactly mm. but the, the pattern set down on the VLE mm. because you know extemporization and improvisation mm. has its place but at the other end of the spectrum mm. almost I mean I also did my very first PhD supervisions with with David um, so you know mm. learnt you know, mm. learnt from you mm. lots of things about mm. how to supervise PhD students. 
David are very different in that context, and there, there may be people in the room who've experienced David's supervisions. <coughs> but um, I certainly learnt a lot, and, but haven't always been able to follow your example because I talk too much. <laughs> David had this wonderful way of managing to say nothing at the right time. And he... <laughs> He would sit, you know, and I'd be thinking, oh, I must speak, the student's not saying anything, I must fill the, fill the space, and David would just be sitting, and the eyes would be closed, and never quite sure whether there was a snooze happening, because, you know, because a Morgan snooze is not an unknown event, but you'd never be absolutely sure. And then suddenly, he'd say something, and it would just be spot on. Nine times out of ten, it would be spot on. You know, it would pick up something the student had said some time ago. It would move the conversation on. And, you know, just that, that lesson in, in when to be quiet mm. was very, very important. Mm. And I think, you know, I know many of your PhD students really appreciated that and also appreciated the sense that you gave them, and I think you've given to many of us, of us all being in it together, mm. no matter how... Um, apprentice we feel ourselves to be we are all mm. in this exciting kind mm. of enterprise but i just wondered if there was anything you wanted to say about your phd students i mean there've been so many mm. and no pressure but you just might want to you know say something about that aspect of your of your work well yeah uh, i mean I, I i think can i just track, uh, backtrack a bit because mm. uh, you know, you're talking about um uh you know, undergraduate teaching mm. uh, together, uh, and um, I mean, I, I learned a lot as well from that, uh, our, our, our sort of joint mm. teaching. Because I, um, you know, um, and I think it's um, I, I learned the importance of actually working together with someone else who mm. perhaps has a slightly different style, but mm. uh, whose mm. style you also came to appreciate. Mm. You know, um, and um, I think I, you know, I got a lot from just observing the you know, perhaps a slightly quieter way in which you did lectures mm -hmm. and things, but mm -hmm. I think also mm -hmm. very, in a very effective way mm -hmm. of teaching. You know? mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Um, I think just on that, you know, the luxury of being able to teach jointly, you know, it, it, it's not really there anymore, but in terms of a, of, of a kind of craft practice mm. experience of, of learning these mm. things, it, it is mm. just the best mm. way. Yeah, it is, yeah. 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 Sorry, go on. Um, PhD supervision. Well, uh, I mean, yes, I think it, it's probably the, the aspect of um, teaching that I enjoyed enjoyed the most. Um, um, partly, well, largely because um, I, I, I think you know, obviously, you learn so much, you know, uh, and, and um, you know, the, 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 they were all you know, within a few weeks of starting on their PhD. They are, in most cases, much more sort of. A, Advanced in their understanding of their particular topic than, than you would ever be, and it, it, it um, uh, and it's also picking up again on that enthusiasm, uh, that commitment to uh, what they're doing, um, and so on. In, in the best cases, I mean, it doesn't mm. always work out like that, but you know, that's that's true, I think, in most cases. And so, and so it's, uh, you know, um, th those kinds of conversations, those PhD conversations were, I, 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 you know, when they worked, and I think more often they, uh, they work than, than not, um, you know, I, I sort of felt extremely uh, invigorated by them mm. and, and, and excited mm. by them. And I think, you know, that, that is, to me, you know, what, what I sort of valued most about, um, about teaching, <coughs> really. And, uh, and the results are in sociology departments, mm. the length of length and breadth of the country and beyond so mm. certainly certainly success um, and you know not not only did David teach me a huge amount about teaching I mean he taught me a huge amount about how to be an academic in other sorts of ways and was very I mean I, I can remember sort of not that not that I've ever found David frightening or intimidating but I do remember screwing my courage up to, to ask you if you would consider editing a book with me Okay. And and the yeah. joint project which became Body Matters yeah. is you know was is, it still yeah. is one of the yeah. joys of my academic life having yes, having I, done I that done that, that with David and organised yeah. a symposium yeah. to yeah. to put the book yeah. together and yeah. um, you know just learnt such a lot yeah. about yeah. how to do those those yeah. things so yeah. and it, 
it's it's still settling. Mm, yeah. yes, it is. <laughs> so, yes. But we won't we won't dwell we won't dwell on that too much. I, I just a, another aspect of, of of work you've done that that struck me and kind of amused me when I thought mm. about it in a different a different way. The, the, that you, you'd actually, you know, much, much earlier than expected, engage with kind of policy work and indeed with impact in, in the work that you did with um, my old school friend David Clark and, oh, and Jane yes, Lewis. He's That's looking right, worried. Yes, He's yes. thinking, what on earth is she going to say? <laughs> yes. um, the research you did yes, um, on, on marriage guidance mm. for what became Relate, right. I think, in yeah. the middle of the time you were doing it. That's almost. it, right. Yes, it yeah. was. That's right. yeah. Could you talk perhaps a bit about? About, about that about and that yes. yeah, well, the uh, impact it had even. Well, I, um, I mean, yes, it was, again, it was a very enjoyable project. Uh, um, working with uh, Jane Lewis, I expect many of you know, um, a, 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 a sociologist with a particular historical mm -hmm. uh, understanding. Uh, David Clark, who uh, had had a training as a therapist before. Um, uh, I think he had training as a therapist before he became a sociologist. Did he? No. No? No. no. Uh, the concurrently, did he? No, yeah, yeah, he yeah. did the marriage yeah. guidance training, yeah, I think, that's before, right. yes. That's right. yeah. um, and um, uh, so we were you know, studying this organisation, which when we started, as you say, was called the National Marriage Guidance Council. And we were, so it's a mixture of interviews and historical analysis and so on. And again, I think a very interesting one. And, and particularly, of course, as it changed its name, it, um, you had a, sort of a major sort of, uh, uh, change in its presentation of self and so on. And, uh, 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 in that period, mm. uh, we attended the launch of the new Relate and, and so on. So it, it was, a, uh, a, I think, a very interesting experience. The impact, I, I'm not sure. Um, the, the then director of Relate was quite annoyed by what we had written mm. and in <laughs> insisted on uh, <laughs> writing a little uh, appendix to tell us where we'd gone wrong at, at, at the end of the, uh, and you can, you can read that and yeah. you can chat for yourself. Um, and I, I mean, I, I, I have no particular evidence of its uh, impact beyond that, but do you, do, do you have any well, other... Well, uh, I mean, my sense is that it, it is read. Mm. Um, I'm just kind of interested mm. in, you know, in in the way that we kind of engage with organisations mm. and they transform mm. before mm. our very eyes. Mm. And mm. so we don't, you know, mm. we can't actually predict as we're now expected to what mm. what the impact might be. You know, mm. you didn't set out to annoy them, but they no, were annoyed, no. you know, you, mm. etc. Anyway, just a, a, an interesting mm. kind mm. of mm. example. Mm. Um, there's, there was another piece that, that, that you wrote, and I, I think it's in sociology, David, and I should have checked. Mm. That, that I think reflects interestingly on your on your your interest in autobiography, mm. your interest in mm. in the in the way people become sociologists mm. and academics, mm. and that's that little piece you wrote, um, I think, with Maud Miller on on CVs. That's right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Which, if you haven't read it, t tell tell people where it is because I. I'm it's in sociology. It's in sociology. I, I can't give you the. Uh, Date, but if you like to um, yeah. email me, I can give you the yeah. details. It's, it's um, absolutely it's, worth reading. It's called the CV as autobiographical practice yes. or something like that. Yes. Um, yeah. And so uh, uh, the, the argument was that um, I mean, it's part of my uh, one of my sort of other main interests, which is in autobiographical studies. Um, and um, I think part of the argument was that autobiography is not necessarily these these huge books that you can buy. In, in Waterstones, but um, we all engage in autobiographical practices, and one kind of place where you do this is when you prepare your CV, you know, because you're preparing a particular kind of account, pres highlighting certain things, editing out other things, and, 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 and so on. So we were sort of asked the question about, you know, um, you, you know, looking at our own, reflecting on our own practices. Uh, how does the, um, um, the, um, the, the CV, uh, in what way can we see that as an autobiographical practice? And that indeed, indeed did have an impact um, because um, shortly after it was published, um, we were summoned to the vice chancellor's mm. office, who Martin Harris was then the vice chancellor. Um, so we, we were sort of, you know, wondering whether we'd uh, somehow brought the university into disrepute or something like that. I, no, in fact, he was actually very interested in what we'd written and sort of, uh, you know, was actually. So well, how can we, uh, how c how can we uh, sort of um, you know, treat these everyday academic practices more sympathetically? 
of it really mm. so, mm. Um, mm. and and the, the you know the reason i think people should read it is that i think it would have impact now on how mm. we think about mm. the, the way that we're doing those things mm. all the time i'm conscious of time david i don't mm. want this conversation to come to an end at all but stomachs may be beginning mm. to rumble if we got a little bit a little bit longer a few minutes more good good because i i i, I wanted to um, kind of pursue a, perhaps a bit further this mm. autobiographical strand mm, yeah. and the way that you've you know brought mm. brought things together in relation mm. to that and you know something that particularly interested me mm. was that was the, the writing you did mm. about the national service mm. but you know you might want to pick up pick mm. other sorts of yeah. e examples mm. Mm. well no I, th I think since since the um, since I did the sort of Bloomsbury stuff I became interested in um, um, Auto stroke biography. Mm. I mean, this is the way um, Ms. Stanley and myself and others okay. sort of attempted to do it because there is a kind of interdependence between the auto and the biography, which I think is uh, always important to to remember. Um, and um, and I, I, again, I see this. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, I've, I've been uh, as one of the, with Liz Stanley um, and uh, Michael Urban. We were sort of um, founder members of the um, <coughs> BSA's autobiography study group, which is uh, you know has been going on for um, Time, many years yeah. now, uh, and uh, yeah. you know is, is uh, I think you know I think a very successful mm. organisation, um, um, and um, and I, I I like that particular way of thinking about so, uh, social relations. I don't see it at all as self indulgent or anything like that. I, it, it's a it's a way of uh, understanding the connectedness of social lives uh, between people and over time yeah. and, 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 and so on. And I think that the, the autobiographical turn, as I think is sometimes referred to, is actually a very major contribution to um, sociological inquiry generally. And I'm very pleased to have been in some ways part of that. Yeah. So is, is that one of the things that you're perhaps most proud of? I think in some <coughs> ways, yes. I mean, I, I, and um, yeah, one, uh, I also like the piece I did on acquaintanceship, but we haven't well, really got time well, to talk about it. Well, we have, we have. That was just going to come yeah. to that because I think I think they're connected. Well, obviously, yeah. are in, in, yeah. in a number of ways, but yeah. I would connect them in that it's it's a way of of taking a, a, of using something as a topic and a resource, mm. if yeah. you like, yeah. and a way of transforming sociological mm. thinking. Mm through what you're looking at, not mm. just using mm. a sociological mm. lens. So, you know, what, what, what I would want to ask you about the work on acquaintanceship is, is whether to some extent you see that as, as mirroring what sociology ought to be about as, as a network of scholars, a community of scholars, mm. Mm. And, and, and perhaps, you know, some autobiographical reflection on, on that as a, yeah. as, a, as a link or a process. Well, cer certainly, um, I mean, it's not whether it's what it ought to be about. In, in some ways, it still is, mm. and and, uh, and I think it's very it's a major part of um, you know uh, groups and meetings like this, um, particularly the British Sociological Association, which um, you know I, to which I you know certainly feed. I think we both owe a great deal mm. in all sorts of different ways, um, uh, and that um, um, and that. that to me, is, is is the way that um, you know sociology gets done. It, it, it's it's um, uh, building up these kinds of networks and connections and, and reflecting on them and um, and, 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 and so on. Um, so that, that also I think I think you're you're right. There is a kind of link between my particular interests and acquaintanceship, for, you know, which for those who haven't read it, it's what I call the space between intimates and strangers. Um, I'll tell you more about it. Uh, later on, um, and um, uh, and you know the general practices of sociologists. No, I, I see most uh, uh, scholarly activities um, you know, around. Yes, e e as well. except there is the, the expectation on us that we're somewhat more reflexive about those Maybe. about those yeah. processes. Yeah. Not yeah. that not that we always yeah. are, and and certainly your very extensive network mm -hmm. of friends and acquaintances, mm -hmm. which you know spreads all over the UK and certainly all over the Nordic countries and well mm. beyond because mm. those of you who don't know David's worked a good deal in 
in Norway, and I think mm. that's been quite an important mm. yeah, part of your your mm. work and your mm. and your mm. later, later development mm. In, mm. in in a way. Um, so I, I, I suppose that you know that network mm. is really mm. saying this mm. is the, to me this is how you do mm. good sociology. Mm. Mm. Just want want to finish, David, though, by by asking you. I mean, it is it is the classic question in a way. I'm not going to ask you for. Your, you know your eight books or your, you know your desert oh island books, but mm. you you can give us them to us if you want. <laughs> but I would have given you warning. Um, but I, but it, 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 in a sense, I am going to ask you about your your formative influences and mm. and whether and to what extent they're as important now, and mm. and what you what your major influences are, you think going forward really mm. because you know as we've said this is mm. a this is a sociological project that mm. continues. Yeah, it does, yeah. Um, uh, well, I think, um, I mean, uh, th this could take a very long time. I'll, I'll just try, try to uh, cut it. I mean, I think certainly Peter Worsley was one of the sort of uh, um, <coughs> most important influences, just because he conveyed that sense of the breadth of what sociology is about. And, you know, the, I remember the very first lecture I attended, which, which covered all, practically all the philosophers you'd heard of, many that you hadn't heard mm -hmm. of, lots of names like Radcliffe Brown and Evans mm -hmm. Pritchard and... God knows who else, mm. Max Weber, you know, all that in the first introductory mm. lecture, you know, and, and lots more. And I thought, well, I'm, I don't understand much of this, but uh, it, it does just sound rather, rather interesting. Mm. And and um, and I, th I think it's Peter Worsley's gift for sort of making connections between all sorts of things, and mm. in uh, you know, a, a ideal commentator on uh, d discussant on papers and, mm. and and so on, because mm. he had that gift for making connections mm. that nobody else would have thought of. And, um, so I think that Peter Worsley was one of the influences. In terms of books, I think um, Robert K. Merton's Social Theory and Social Structure, which is perhaps not the most exciting title in the world, but it's, uh, I, if, uh, Merton is uh, someone I always return book. to, because mm. he's partly because he's such a wonderful stylist mm. um, and um, <coughs> you know, writes so beautifully on so many topics. And, uh, and we can't uh, say that about many sociologists. <laughs> exactly, <yeah. laughs> Um, more recently, then I think someone like Liz Stanley, I think was a tremendous, uh, uh, tremendous influence, and in, uh, um, you know that particular use of historical, mm -hmm. autobiographical mm -hmm. imagination and, and, and so on that she worked on. Um, um, there's um, Janet Finch's uh, work on the sort of family and uh, you know, or, or the way in which, again, um, looking at everyday matters in a slightly different pair of spectacles. Um, and so, I mean, one, one could list, list many more. I mean, obviously, I'm, uh, uh, um, also Ronnie Frankenberg is another person who I um, uh, owe, owe the great deal to just because mm. of his sort of wit and, uh, and imagination. Insight, yes. and, and imagination. And sense of fun. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and fun. Yes. Yes. And I think, I think all these people <coughs> I've mentioned do sort of have a sort of sense that um, sociology, as well as any, anything else, it can mm. be fun. And you know something to be enjoyed as as, as well as everything mm -hmm. else. Um, uh, well, right. well, I mean, yeah, I think I would enough. I would add I would add to that list that it's obvious that that Goffman had a major yeah, influence, sure, yeah. and just that you know yeah. sense of the importance mm. of ev of, of mm. everyday life. But really, you know, what I take from that is mm. is this thing about about the enterprise being fun. Mm, yeah. And and being something that we we can mm. we it is serious and you know mm. sociology is a serious business but it can also mm. be be playful and I think David can give us all a great lesson in that. Um, I just have one final question really, and the answer might be f fun. What's it like having a centre named after you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, as, as I've said to many uh, m many people before, I mean, when, when Carol sort of first uh, she, she approached me at. Um, a BSA conference and said, I, th I think you better sit down um, <laughs> and uh, have a cup of coffee. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, asked me if uh, you know, it would be right to name centre after me. And uh, at first I, th I thought, well, don't you have to be dead to... Um, <laughs> Pinching <laughs> yourself. I said, th does Carol know something that I, I didn't? <laughs> and, um, but having realised that, um, I, I, you know, I was obviously deeply flattered, deeply touched by it. Um, and it's still, you know, when people say I'm, I'm going to something at the Morgan Centre, I said, well, which Morgan is, you know, is Lewis mm. Henry or, um, mm. Mm. or um, you know. For there are many you know, Morgans. Lots of <laughs> J.P. Morgan, <laughs> you know, what, but no. It's, 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 
So there we are. The answer sounds like fun, yeah, and I, you know, and I hope continues yeah. to to be so. Yeah. David, yeah. it it's always a pleasure to talk to you, and I've I've I hope everybody's enjoyed listening listening to your responses and our conversation. I certainly have, and I look forward to very many more conversations. Yeah. And just to thank you, on on behalf of all the people you've influenced, and you know the 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 fairy dust that you spread around the sociological community <laughs> is is still <laughs> very much appreciated. <laughs> well, well, thank you, and thanks to everybody at the centre who've really supported me in this life. Yeah.